Hey everyone, sorry it's been a while. I've just been trying to work through this movement netcode, which is what this video is going to be about. Um, but before we get started, I've just, YouTube's been deleting uh, some of your comments, and usually they're really good comments, but YouTube just deletes them before I get a chance to reply to them. Uh, I've contacted YouTube, but you know, just haven't heard anything back. So I've made a Discord that I'm going to put in the description. So if you leave a comment and it disappears or you just want to talk directly, you got suggestions or anything, um, just jump on the Discord. And I'll be in there pretty regularly. Like I said, I've been working on this movement networking stuff for ages and it's actually been working fine for quite a while. I've just been tinkering and playing around with different things. Um, so I'm hoping to make a lot more videos now and move on to a lot of diff a lot of other things like um, you know spell handling, adding quests, working more on the terrain, the adding textures, all kinds of other interesting things now that this is kind of solved. So that's all going to be coming up very soon. I'm going to try and and have videos every 2 weeks. I think I was doing every month and then this video is well really delayed. So yeah, I'm going to go for every two weeks to have at least something up. And another thing I was doing was trying to get things sort of finished before putting a video up. Um, the thinking was I didn't want to sort of waste people's time with, um, you know, unfinished stuff or that kind of thing. But I think that is still interesting. Um, let me know if I'm wrong, but I think it's still interesting to see progress updates and that kind of thing. So that's sort of the direction I'm going to go is just regular updates about where I'm up to, what I've been working on, even if it's not finished, you know, just the thought process. Um, so yeah, look forward to more frequent updates. Something I've found while working on this is there's a lot of articles that talk about multiplayer techniques and, uh, you know, all this theory, but there's not many examples of actually implementing it. So that was something that I've been struggling with as well. So what I'm going to show today is just my interpretation of it combined with a few examples that I've pieced together. It works well enough, but still a lot of tweaking to be done. So when the Realm Networking starts, I set two variables to the current ticks in milliseconds since the application started. And I use this just because it uh, it never goes backwards. So the system clock could potentially jump all over the place, the client could change that. Um, but these ones, they always tick forward from the time the application started. Um, so that gives us our local time. To get in sync with the server, we need to find out. Uh, there's two ways you could do it. You could get the time from the server and override your local time with that time and then keep track of the offset going from there. What I've opted to do here is just have this client just run its own time and whatever time the server's on, I'll have that as the offset and we'll just add it every time I need to calculate the next tick. So I send this packet to the server um, with basically nothing in it, just requesting pretty much the, the server time. Um, while this is also happening, I've been getting... Uh, pings from the server so I know the latency between the server and my client um, and when we receive the offset packet back um, so we get the server time and we get the current game time which is just the the start time the current time minus the start time that's so the difference between when I started and the time now and then I calculate the diff so I get the server time and I add the latency to it because it's taken so by the time the server sent that message with its current time it would have taken I mean at least the latency time to get here and so the difference between the server time as best as we can figure it out and the client time is the time difference now I've been playing around with this trying to get um trying to get a little bit more accurate and sort of smooth it out a little bit so I add it into uh, a circular buffer and then every time I receive a packet, I loop through that and calculate the average, which seems to work pretty well. So once we've got all that sorted out, we have the local time, we have the offset, we can then calculate what tick 
we're up to, which should then now be in sync with the server. So even though there's a time delay between packets arriving at our client and the server, now that we've got the offset, we can, our client should technically be in sync with the, with the server, even despite the time delay. So on every time the process runs here, I call this method update timers, which basically sets the current time, calculates the diff, which is just a, that, um, like I said before, the time since this, uh, since the application started, we add the time offset. So that then brings the time up into, so you see, this is what I mean about, I didn't set my client time to the server time. I just add the offset every time I need to calculate what tick we're up to. Um, so that gives us our sync time multiplying by the tick speed. So the server runs at 20 Hertz, which means it's a one tick every 50 milliseconds. So multiplying by 0 0.02 is equivalent of dividing by 50. So if you divided 100 milliseconds by 50, that would be two ticks. So whatever the time we're up to now, essentially divided by 50, would give us the current tick. I've probably just blasted through that, but feel free to ask questions. But yeah, so now we have the current tick, and this just opens the doorway for pretty much all the networked packets that we're going to be receiving we can put them in order yeah it's really this is the this is ground level stuff now that we've got the clocks synced and we're running along the same tick as the server we need a way to play actions at particular ticks so you know a spell cast happens at this tick and then they move this way at the next at a, you know, a future tick those all need to happen in order so when a packet comes in with a with a timestamp uh, I add a buffer to it, prevents sort of jitter, and I'll link to an article about this. So if we get a packet and the next one's delayed, or you know we, we get a, another packet from before and then it's resent, we give ourselves a 500 millisecond window to receive all the packets in order to sort of mask that dropped packets. Or due. If we just applied them as soon as they came in, our window where we're going our error window is very, very small. So we add a buffer just so things are a bit smoother, even though there's a bit of a delay. Um, and then, yeah, so based on the timestamp, plus a little bit of the uh, latency, multiplied by the tick speed again to get us the current tick that this particular packet should be played at. If it's already played, I'll apply it immediately. Um, I might look into dropping certain packets, but we'll see. And then if the uh, dictionary, so depending update dictionary is just a dictionary with a key for a tick and then it's got all the data that needs to be applied in that tick so if there's no key it makes the key and puts an array of data there if there's a key it just pushes the data into that that existing tick once the update's been pushed into that dictionary there's another process that runs that uh, looks for the current tick if it can find uh, data for that tick it'll then apply that um, and then remove all the data from the um, pending updates dictionary. Applying the update uh, is pretty much supported on a case-by-case -case basis. So for movement updates, we get the unit, which is just the representation of that object in the world, and we just set the movement on it. I've been doing a lot of iterating on the movement here, and I'm going to make another video specifically about this. Um, but for now, I've just been setting the orientation and position directly, which actually works surprisingly well. Um, especially given that uh, the flags that I've got set already kind of do a little bit of interpolation or extrapolation rather.